Pakistan floods are really uh, on top of everyone's minds in the climate negotiations. Uh, two points of an argument for loss and damage finance gets built from the situation of the Pakistan floods. One, that private sector commercial insurance completely breaks down in the case of this kind of disaster of this magnitude. In the past, people have talked about setting up climate disaster uh, you know, insurance mechanisms with a layer of public finance, but it's something of this magnitude, uh, it completely breaks down. And the second is that for countries like these, uh, other countries in the Caribbean and Latin America, uh, a disaster of this magnitude makes them fall deeper into climate debt. Uh, now, where will the additional money for loss and damage come from? Uh, the uh, COP26 Glasgow discussions had happened before the, uh, the Ukraine war broke out. So now it seems that, you know, if at that time they said they don't expect $100 billion at least per year until 2023, now to talk about additional loss and damage finance seems even beyond people's, um, you know, uh, sort of what they're willing to discuss. However, there's been a very very nice op-ed by Rachel Kite recently talking about innovative new sources of finance. For example, she talks about putting a windfall tax on fossil fuel companies. She talks about a fee on voluntary carbon market transactions for buyers, a tax on business class air travel, and debt for climate swaps. And as you would know, the IMF and others have been talking about debt for climate swaps um, for a while now. So there are some additional sources of raising finance, even in this situation where the Ukraine war seems to be looming large over everybody.